Coach, when you went back and reevaluated yourself from the first eight games, what do you feel like you maybe learned uh, about your offense, and what would you like to see improve these last couple of games? Yeah, I, I think <clears throat> offensively, I feel like situational football, um, we've gotten better and better. I think last week hit a hurdle there. Um, I think part of that is the opponent. I think part of it is just a, as a whole how we played. But I thought situational football-wise, we've done a good job in terms of red zone, third down. Um, those were, I think, the biggest things I was anxious about in August was, you know, our offense is in. How do we? How are we able to play situationally? Um, I think for us to be successful here in these last four weeks, that's got to continue to improve. Um, I think week three, week four, we finally kind of settled in on our personnel. Um, I, I wish we had gotten there faster. Um, we obviously didn't, and I thought that cost us early. Obviously, as a team, we've moved on. Uh, but I think when you look back at what, you, you, what you've done in a body of work and truly have time to self-scout and, and look at what actually is good, um, I think from a personnel standpoint, us going and figuring out who our best 11 are, playing those guys, and, and kind of living and dying with them. Um, I think as a whole for us to continue to get better, the situational football part has got to continue to, to be where it is. Obviously, you want to improve uh, from a third down perspective. Um, continuing for us to be able to pick up our first first down. That's really when you've seen us be able to play at the tempo we want to play. Um, when we've been able to pick up a first down, we've generally had success on the drive in terms of scoring points. It's when we've stalled out on first and second down um, that we've we've really stumbled and had to punt the football. But um, I think the reduction in penalties from early on in the year, the reduction in turnovers, our defense has helped us drastically in the, the last five or six weeks. Us not turning the football over the last five or six weeks at the rate we were early in the season. I think all of that comes with continuity. All of that comes with, with getting your best players on the field, settling in at the quarterback spot. All of that has kind of come together where we hit our stride. Like I said, um, the, the game a week ago, you can argue, probably took a step back. Um, but for us to be able to move forward, being able to play penalty-free football, and I'm talking pre-snap penalties, those in-play in, um, in penalties will happen, aggressive penalties will happen, but it's the false starts, the pre-snap alignment things. I feel like we've cleaned up as guys have gotten more comfortable in the system and, and the pace of play. We've been able to get faster and faster as we've gone. So really proud of where we're at. Obviously, huge four games. Um, We've got to continue to grow, and, and this is when you find out what, what teams are all about is this last month in November, and, and we've challenged our guys to finish the way you're supposed to finish. Jamie. Coach, when you consider the number of injuries you've had on the offensive line and at running back, are you pleased with your production in the run game or maybe even surprised a little bit? I mean, I, I feel like it, that's been – if you talk about what our biggest hurdle has been, it's been that. Um, you know, we're, we're not super deep at either of those spots. We're not really deep at all at either of those spots. Um, and I feel like the last three, four, five weeks, we've really had to piece it together. I think Coach Ellerby's done a really good job of, of figuring out who the best five are going with the combination. And, and guys like Jerome Carvin being able to play center has, has been really monumental to our success. Um, in the success that we've had. The running back spot has been really, really frustrating with, with at times, you know, being so limited with who you have back there. It's been tough in a lot of ways, um, specifically to run the football. We've put a lot on Hendon in a lot of those situations for him to run the football and have had to be creative, more creative than, honestly, I've ever been in terms of finding ways to hat people up and, and still being able to run the football. Again, I think you look at a week ago, we didn't run the football. We, we weren't able to finish the game and have the success we wanted to. For us to have success offensively, you have to run the football. Um, you know, to, to stay ahead of the sticks on first down, you, you saw us a week ago where I didn't feel like we could. Um, and we, we got into some perimeter screen game stuff, some ways to get the drive started. Um, where the first seven weeks we've been able to run the football and get those things done. Um, I think it's really, really hard to, to get a drive started like that. Luckily, I feel like coming back off this bye week, we've got a full stable back to healthy at running back. Um, we're back to healthy on the O-line. 
feel like we're, we're going to have our best chance now down this stretch to run the football as long as we can obviously stay healthy. But it, it has. It's been really, really challenging, uh, both in running the football and, and being able to protect the quarterback in a lot of ways. You know, when opposing players go down with injuries, m multiple stoppages within a drive, how big is the gap between the advantage that you have with tempo versus uh, the reality of having to slow it down? How big is that gap? Yeah, um, I think obviously that that's what what in a lot of ways defensive football has gotten to, and and you know. Ten years ago, the tempo part wasn't as big, and, and people didn't didn't have to have answers. Now the tempo part is really really big, and so uh, specifically for us and how we play, and there's several other teams in our league that that are in that boat. Um, we've got to just reset and be able to start it like like we're P and ten and and going from scratch. We've got ways to create the illusions of tempo, and in, in terms of you, you've seen us huddle and break it fast and do a bunch of different things with motions and things. Uh, it's just part of the game, you know, like obviously it's a it's a national headline at this point, but it's part of the game. So for us, we got to continue to come up with creative ways to get the illusion of tempo started. Um, you know, obviously defenses can sub and, and that's the part of it where you're getting fresh bodies in there. But at the same time, our guys can rest and we can sub. And for us, it's a mental standpoint of starting from that point and getting it going again. And and you know, I sound cliche a little bit, but control what you can control. All we can control is what we do, and us executing on that first play to be able to again, like I said, when we when we're able to pick up that first first down, we've been pretty successful. At that point, it's a reset. Pick up the first first down again and get going. So, I, obviously, it, it halts your play, but it's a mental standpoint of like to 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 those guys. And I'm upstairs, so I'm on a headset. I'm not in front of them, but. Hey, awesome. Got them right where we want them. They're obviously nervous. They're obviously on their heels. You got them exactly where you want them. Go execute. So um, it's just part of the game, and it is what it is. And for our guys, it's just a matter of resetting. But obviously, it kills your tempo there for that second. And then you got to just restart and, and come up with creative ways to create the illusion of tempo. Vince, then Patrick. Alex, the last couple of games, it doesn't seem like there's been as many runs from Hendon Hooker early in the game. We see more in the second half trying to win the ball game type of things. And I know there's the read element part of that that just plays out the way it does. But have you guys had any conversations to maybe try to not have as many of those runs on Hendon considering all the injuries and him being banged up at all? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you obviously, the, the quarterback run part is part of what Hendon is and what part of his game. Um, I, I've always looked at it as you, you'll run him when you feel like you need the extra hat in the run game. Um, so in terms of having to run him, he was banged up a little bit there um, for the last couple of weeks. You'd like to try to keep him upright. He is also a absolutely reckless runner in a lot of ways. I said it the last time I was up here. He's about as tough of a kid as they come. He's learning to be smart in how he runs the football. We are also trying to be really smart with how we run him, where the hits aren't necessarily coming from the side and where he can see where it's coming from. So there's a little bit of creativity there and what goes into it. Um, I think him having the ball in his hands at the end of games is really a credit to him. Um, I want the ball in his hands at the end of the game. Uh, I think it gives us the best chance to win. So you're going to get it to the guys you feel like can give you the best chance to win, both on the perimeter and then him carrying the football. I'm extremely confident. Our offense is extremely confident with him having the ball in his hands. And our injuries at running back have caused some of that. Our injuries at the O-line have caused some of that. But at the end of the game, I want the ball in Hendon Hooker's hands. And he knows that. Um, I think he's got a level of confidence about him right now. And offensively, we have a level of confidence with him carrying the football. So. I want the ball in his hands, whether it's a read part of it, whether it's getting him out on the perimeter and letting him run past the ball, um, or even some movement past stuff with him where he likes being out there, being able to see things. And um, But at the end of the day, you want the ball in his hands to give you the best opportunity to win. And, and he knows that, we know that, and, and there's a level of confidence that goes with it. How much, uh, how important has it been that the three receivers you guys have with Devontae, Bayless, and Cedric have been the past game? 
Yeah, you know, you for us, I think to be successful, um, and you got you got a chance to see it a week ago at Alabama. We can we can create some big explosive plays in the pass game. Those guys have kind of done that all year. Hendon has helped that situation. But for us to be ultimately successful, you have to run the football. Uh, for us to be one-dimensional, I think it makes it really, really difficult because you, you live and die with it, and you go three and out really, really quickly if that's all you're doing as well. So we can't put our defense in those spots. Uh, I felt like a week ago we did that in the fourth quarter. Those guys had been out there for so long that um, you don't give them a chance to, to chew up clock and at least let those guys get their, get their uh, legs back and their breath back. For us to be ultimately successful, for us to win games in the SEC, you have to run the football. So we got to do a better job of coming up with ways to do it. Injuries, not injuries, those are in a lot of ways excuses, and, and we don't let our guys make excuses. I, I can't make excuses. We've got to find ways with who we have to run the football. And we've got good enough players up front. We're healthy now at running back uh, between the quarterback we, we've got to be able to continue to find ways, and then, and then using our tempo to pick our pick our spots in the throw game, and and be able to execute. Not every play needs to go for a 75-yard touchdown. We've got to just continue to keep Hendon upright and effective. And and honestly, what he's done extremely well since he took over is his timing, his ball placement. He's been incredibly efficient. And my job to keep us efficient, but it's my job to also run the football effectively in order to be efficient. It also sucks playing O-line when all you're doing is throwing the football. Those guys are teeing off on you, and we've got to do a good job this week included of, of setting a tempo early with, with the run game, and, and, um, and then the, the pass game will come. And so um, if you don't run the football, it's really, really hard to throw the ball. It's eight, these guys have the ability to drop eight at any time. So did Alabama. Really everybody now at this point can drop eight and take away whatever they want in the pass game. We've got to be able to run the football effectively. Last question really quickly, Wes. Yeah, Alex, it seems like at least in the past few weeks, maybe the tight ends have not been as involved in the pass game, at least in terms of numbers. Is that just the, the game flowing away from them? Is that have, them having to help with get hats on hats and pass pro? Or, or what's sort of led to that? Yeah, I think you, you hit it on the head. I think both of those things, um, you know, and, and we were banged up there as well um, the last couple of weeks. I think we've we've used those guys in pass protection a little bit more. Um, we've just not targeted them as much. I, I don't know if so much intentional. We've not had a whole lot of um, situations in down in the red zone where where I'd like to get those guys involved, the bigger bodies, the Jacob Warns and, and, and Princeton. We've targeted them. I, I really felt like we've been average there. Um, we targeted them four times last week. Um, I think it's just kind of part of the, the flow of the game, part of it, using them more in pass protection. Um, I'm certainly not down on those guys. They got to keep continuing to develop and go. Um, but I think I think we will continue to use them as matchups present. Um, you know, for us, it's all about matchups, and and we'll take advantage of whatever matchups we could find on the perimeter in the pass game specifically, and um, and also a credit to to Javante and Cedric and Bayless, those guys, and Jalen Hyatt, those guys have been playing at a really high rate. Uh, at the end of the day, you're going to get it to to the guys you really feel like can make a play with it. And, and I'm certainly not down on those guys by any means. I, I think it's been a combination of all those things that you brought up where um, we've, we've used them both in the backfield more. Um, and honestly, we've been a lot, I don't know, it feels like maybe a lot more vertical down the field passing, which, which is not what those guys are there for. Uh, but I think they'll show up. I think they'll show up this week. I think they'll we'll continue to have to use them because they are good pass catchers. and. Um, and we'll continue to use them as matchups present. Thank you, Coach.